With ibrutinib and idelalisib, one of the big advantages is that they're not myelosuppressive. So that, in fact, probably the biggest complication of giving chemotherapy-based regimens to patients with CLL is myelosuppression and infection, in particular in a population that's already often immunosuppressed by virtue of their disease and or their prior treatments. So that complication more or less goes away, which is not to say a patient never gets an infection, but they can get an infection just from, again, their underlying issues rather than direct myelosuppression from the drug. Not only are these drugs not myelosuppressive, but they're very good at improving cytopenias. And in fact, you see that improvement in baseline hemoglobin or platelet count fairly early, which is interesting because you can see lymphocyte counts in the hundreds of thousands, and yet at the same time, the platelets and the hemoglobin are improving. And again, that's in marked contrast to what we see with chemo. So, and that's important because a frequent question I get asked now that these drugs are commercially available is, well, my patient has a baseline cytopenia, should I start at a reduced dose? Which is a normal way of thinking when all of your experience is based on chemotherapy. And the answer to that question, however, is no. You want to give the full dose because you want this fairly rapid improvement in the cytopenias that you see when you use the full dose. In terms of the uh, duration of response, we're talking in a fairly refractory population on the order of years, so these are durable responses. Um, in ibrutinib, the only group in whom the median PFS has been reached within that relapsed refractory population are the patients with 17P deletion, where it was 28 months. And again, to put that in, in perspective, if you look at the best published data for frontline PFS and 17P, it's 11 months. So you can imagine then if in the relapsed refractory patients it's 28, um, that's quite impressive. And that's, I think, why the regulatory authorities uh, also gave them a frontline approval, specifically in that cohort.